everything you've been told about simplified Chinese characters has been a lie. You've probably heard the story. Simplified Chinese is like the cheap knockoff version of Chinese that the Communist Party created to replace traditional characters, which are far more beautiful and meaningful. After all, how can you have the character for love without the heart in it? Or how can you replace a character that's been around for 2,000 years? The answer? By using one that's been around for 3,000 years. That's right, the simplified version of this character meaning cloud actually predates the traditional one by roughly a thousand years. And the simplified character for love was not created in the 1950s, but actually existed in calligraphy since the Jin Dynasty. Although not all simplified characters have such a long history, the idea that simplified characters were snapped into existence in the 1950s is completely false. And in this video, you'll learn why nearly 80% of simplified Chinese characters existed long before the birth of modern China. To be honest, the narrative I just described is exactly what I'd always heard. But after doing my own research, the truth I discovered was shocking. Of all the characters that were simplified in China, only about 20% were invented after 1949. And only a fraction of those were created from thin air, so to speak. The vast majority of simplified characters evolved from ancient forms, calligraphy, or handwriting. Basically, they were all derived from variations of standard characters. What we know as simplified characters today were simply the variant characters of yesterday. Let me describe what the landscape was like in the late Qing Dynasty, the era right before modern China. The first thing you have to understand is that it was more or less a feudal system, and there was a large power divide between the rich and the poor. And like many parts of the world, literacy was generally reserved for the rich. So with that in mind, let's talk about the writing system. The traditional characters we have today are more or less the same ones that were used in the Qing Dynasty. But what many people don't realize is that during that time, there were also many variant forms of characters that were circulating around in day-to-day -day life. These were called suzi, or vulgar characters. They were basically unofficial, easier to write versions of the standard characters. I'm gonna make an analogy to English here. Think of words like watcha, cuz, gonna. People use these words all the time. I'm gonna make gonna is just a shortened version of going to but you wouldn't ever use these in formal documents or even academic writing. Such was the state of vulgar characters in China. People used them and understood them, but if you want to pass your imperial exam, they better not find a single vulgar character in your essay. And using these vulgar characters is the first method by which Chinese characters were simplified. Although the more accurate way of saying it is that these vulgar characters were simply officially adopted as standard characters. It would be like if Gunna was added to the Merriam-Webster dictionary in 2023. And here are a few examples of vulgar characters that became simplified characters. Hua, picture, liang, to of, and ting, to listen. The second method to simplify characters is to use their cursive forms. This method is extremely important because it accounts for more simplified characters than any other one on this list. In Chinese, it's called cao shu kai hua, or turning grass script into regular script. Now, grass script is a cursive form of Chinese that's existed since the Han Dynasty, and it basically combines many strokes into a few continuous strokes. That's the definition of cursive. So you can see in this character dong, which means east, the simplified form basically takes the grass script and then redefines the individual strokes. Other examples of grass script evolving into simplified characters include chang, long, ya, asia, and yu, fish. And the character everybody likes to pick a fault with, I. The simplified character for love can be traced as far back as the Jin Dynasty when it looked like this in cursive script. By the time of the Yuan Dynasty, a version of this character had already appeared that looked exactly like the modern version. But for some reason, during the Song, Ming, and Qing Dynasty, an extra dot appeared in this character, which decided to disappear once again for the 20th century. This method is also responsible for many of the component simplifications. If you remember in my Simplified Chinese video, in 1956, 515 characters and 54 components were simplified. And a lot of those simplified components were taken directly from the cursive forms, like yan, shi, and si. The third method of simplifying Chinese is to simply take the ancient forms. Now this may sound ironic, until you realize that Chinese characters didn't just get simpler throughout history, sometimes they got harder. One such example is the Yun character that I mentioned in the introduction of this video. Even in the oracle bone inscriptions, which were the earliest form of Chinese characters that can be traced directly to modern Chinese, 
This character already existed, and as you can see, it looks strikingly similar to the modern, simplified version of this character. The Rain Radical on top only started appearing around 200 BC when the Small Seal script was created under Qin Shi Huang. If this name sounds familiar, he's the guy behind Great Wall and Terracotta Army. Also burned books and killed a bunch of people. So anyways, other simplifications that actually restore the ancient form of the character include Li, Beautiful, Cong, Follow, and Wang, Net. The fourth method is consolidating similar characters or homophones into one form. This method reduced the total number of characters but also increased the number of homonyms in Chinese. For example, take a look at these two traditional characters, Gan and Gan. The first character, Gan, means dry, and the second character, Gan, means to do or a tree trunk. Because of the similar pronunciation, they were both replaced by this character, Gan, which itself is a separate character. The original meaning of Gan is a tree trunk or stem, and it was representing a forked branch. Because such forked branches were often used as weapons in ancient times, this character somehow took on the meaning of a shield. So this character replaced the other two, and all three characters merged into one form. It would be like if we decided there, there, and there would all be spelled T-H-E-R-E. -E. And a couple more examples include Ji and Liao. The next three methods I'll talk about include a lot more modern simplifications. So of the 20% that were simplified after 1949, many of them use these methods. The fifth method of simplifying Chinese is to simply take the most unique portion of the character and delete the rest of it. So for example, in the character Sheng, the upper left portion is unique and it's unlike any other character that exists, so we'll take that and delete the rest of it. Now this particular character is not a modern simplification actually, and it's been around since the Yuan Dynasty. But the character Chan, on the other hand, is a modern simplified character, and it uses the same method. You get rid of the Sheng, and it still remains a unique character in its simplified form. The sixth method of simplifying Chinese characters is to take the phonetic component and swap it out for a simpler homophone. So take the character Zhen, for example. First we're going to take the radical and swap it out for its cursive form. Then we take the phonetic component Zhen and swap it out for a simpler homophone Zhen. This makes sense from a practical point of view because by keeping the phonetic component, you make it a little bit easier to guess the pronunciation of the character. And because it is just a phonetic component, swapping it out doesn't really take away from the meaning of the character either. While most of these characters are fairly modern, some do have a longer history, like the characters Yuan and Yuan. Both of these forms first appeared in the Yuan Dynasty, when the phonetic component Yuan was replaced by the simpler homophone Yuan, and I wouldn't have any idea why they would want to do this. <laughs> yeah, boy. They also don't have to be perfect homophones like the last example. In the simplified version of Jie, the phonetic component is pronounced Ji, similar but not the same. However, now it does match this other similar character, Jie. The last method for simplifying Chinese is to simply take a complex portion and replace it with a meaningless symbol. I did not save the best for last and this is honestly the dumbest one on the list. Whenever you hear people complaining about simplified characters, they often bring up the fact that this component is incredibly overused in simplified characters. And it's true! It's like whenever they couldn't figure out how to simplify a character, they just stuck it in there. Unlike some components that consistently replaced another component, this symbol managed to replace the left half of chicken, the right half of Han, the bottom of rumble, and the middle of tree. There is zero consistency as to what this thing can replace. And while most of these characters are pretty modern, there are some that have a longer history, like the character Dui, which dates back to the Song Dynasty. And there's also this less common X symbol, like in the character for wind and region, which is used in the same manner. So that concludes the seven primary ways by which Chinese characters were simplified. But like most things in life, it's not a perfect system. There are inconsistencies, questionable choices, and blatant omissions, but that's okay. I'm just here to present the facts and the history of Chinese writing as it is. I'm not here to tell you that simplified Chinese is better or that traditional Chinese is better. That's for another day. I just hope that you learned a lot from this video, and I certainly learned a lot researching this topic myself. And something else I've been learning about recently is how to better protect myself online. So earlier this year, I started using Surfshark VPN, and I'm happy to announce that I've started an affiliate partnership with them because this is a company and a service that I've honestly used and loved even before I had any intentions of promoting them. They are simply the best value VPN on the market right now. For just $60 US, you have access to a premium VPN service for seven different users. That's just 70 cents per person per month. So if you're looking for a high quality VPN service for yourself, your family, or your friends, 
I definitely recommend Surfshark VPN. And if you make a purchase through my link in the description, you will be directly helping to fund my future videos, which I'm extremely grateful for. So thank you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. 我们下次再见了，拜拜。